today we are going to talk about Taurus, its ruling planet Venus, and its associated house, the second house. Taurus is an earth sign. Taurus is a feminine sign. And as an earth sign, it is related to the five senses. Taurus loves the senses and Taurus trusts the senses. Taurus feels really comfortable when it can sense something, when it can feel it or touch it or smell it or, or so on. Not, not as comfortable with, say, abstract ideas and so on. So Taurus tends to gravitate towards things that are sensual. It also therefore graduate, gravitates towards things related to the body and possessions because possessions are things that we can touch and see and move around. Taurus has a lot to do with security and some of the virtues of Taurus are, for example, patience. Taurians are hardworking. They have good stamina. They're affectionate. I think I said patient. They're very grounded, very stable. And their challenges are around emotional issues when they're not feeling so secure. So if their object of their affections, for example, is far away or feels like it's leaving, then Taurians can be kind of grabby and clingy. Taurians can feel insecure if they can't put their hands on the things that they love. And Taurians can get very possessive and very jealous. They are slow to get angry, but when they do get angry, they have very explosive tempers. Now, you may be thinking, I'm not a Taurus. I don't know any people who are Tauruses. This has nothing to do with me. However, we all have Taurus in our charts. So we all have an area of our life where these issues, these topics apply. And depending on what we have in Taurus, where our Venus is, Venus rules Taurus, and what we have in the second house, the second house is the house that relates to Taurus, those will be areas of our lives where all of these qualities and phenomena show up. So what can we say about Venus? Well, Venus is the goddess of beauty and Tureans love beauty. Now the thing is, what do we think is beautiful? What we have in Taurus, where our Venus is located, and what we have in the second house will indicate, will help us to understand better what we find beautiful. This is related to values. What do we value? So usually what we value is qualities we admire in other people, and then we try to attract those qualities to ourselves. Venus is the great magnetizer. So we may magnetize those kinds of people towards ourselves, or we may buy those kinds of possessions and surround ourselves with them, or we may cultivate those qualities. From a transcendental point of view, from an astro dharma point of view, the best idea is to cultivate those qualities because as we know, possessions and people, well, things are impermanent and we just simply can't rely on, on things or other people to make us happy. However, our, our own state, we can cultivate the most beautiful state and that we can take with us wherever we go and that'll make our Taurus very happy. Taurus is kind of, um, we could say a spa aficionado, right? So, so the Tureans are, may often be very well versed in the latest and greatest bath salts or massage oils or spa treatments. And uh, that can range also in, into, that can go into areas like say only wearing um, natural fibers that feel good against the skin or wearing kind of drapey clothes that kind of stimulate that sense of touch. So those are areas to explore and uh, it's meant to be fun. That could, that could be pretty fun. Candlelight, satin sheets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are all Taurian or Venusian qualities. 
so you get the idea. In order to study astrology, we break it down into its different components. So we break it down into the 12 signs, into the different planets, into the 12 houses, and look at each of those individually. Our natal horoscope, the, the chart that depicts the moment, the time and place that we were born, is actually a complex weaving of all of these things, and they're all influencing one another. So if someone has a strong Taurus, but say, for example, relationships with other Venus rules relationships, Taurus is usually affectionate, then if that's challenging, then I would look at the aspects. I would look at what kind of aspects there are between Venus and other planets. So we can have what, what are called soft aspects, which are as, um, relationships with other planets that help those energies flow well together. Or we can have what are called hard aspects, which it means that the relationship between the planets don't play so well together. They either um, get themselves into kind of um, headbutts or stalemates. <clears throat> and then we need to figure out ways to loosen those energies and, and get them to flow in some way. It, it can be very challenging. And the good news is, and Turians will love this because Turians are so diligent, the bigger the challenge, the better the benefits over time once we work through that challenge. That's really where our greatest gifts lie because wisdom comes through that process to try to resolve these seemingly impossible conundrums. The nodes are related to the position of the moon and there's the south node and the north node. The south node indicates the karma that we were born into, so we call it our karma spot. And every sign, every planet has has uh, upsides and downsides and where our south node is located we usually have so much of something that we experience it as unpleasant it, it may be completely neutral but we have so much of it we take it for granted we're kind of sick of it we uh, it makes us just go ah our north node is the opposite of that and it's usually a part of our chart that we can scarcely relate to, and that's what we call our dharma. That's our sort of part of our spiritual destiny in this lifetime. <clears throat> and we need to make an actual journey from the south node to its opposite placement to the north node. And in the beginning, that can seem almost unimaginable. It takes, it takes a lot of effort to make that, bring that north node into consciousness and to develop those skills. And uh, then when we do that, when we grow into our north node, the positive qualities of the south node become available to us. So it's like this double bonus. So if we're going to talk about north node in the second house, let's talk a bit about the second house. So we can look at the houses. Each house represents a different area of our life. And it begins at the ascendant, which is the moment of our birth. And we can look at the houses as like a human lifetime. So if we're born at the time of the ascendant, then our first house is when we're a very small infant and we're just kind of one with everything and we haven't really learned to distinguish between what's us and what's the world. And so the first house has a lot to do with something is so much a part of our identity that we don't even think of it as part of our identity. It just is. Now the second house, we're a little bit older and we're learning to distinguish like, oh, this, these are actually different things. Like mother is out there and there's something called me in here. And you notice I'm touching the first way that we discover that is through the body. We start realizing that, oh, I'm moving my hands and this is happening. So second house has a lot to do with the body. And the body is our ultimate resource, right? This is our spaceship, our vehicle for this lifetime, our physical vehicle. So this is our ultimate physical resource. And then we, as we get older, we start finding different ways to adorn the body. You know, what is it that we love? Back to values. What is it we admire? And then we start bringing those things towards ourself. Venus magnetizes. Okay, so that may show up in 
our, our presentation to others. It may show up in our, our belongings. You know, what kind of clothing do you wear? And then it starts to extend out what kind of car do you drive? It starts to extend out to possessions. What kinds of things do we like to have around us? So again, we're talking about resources. What do we think are resources? Do we think talents are resources? Those are, say, inner resources. So what kind of talents do we develop? Because those are the inner resources that we bring to any situation. And then what do we think are resources? Do we think like a house is a resource? Do we think investments are important resources? Money of, is an obvious resource. And so the resources that we value, back to values, and the qualities that we value, those are going to be revealed to us in the, in the second house. So to have North Node in the second house in, in Taurus has a lot to do with, with values. We consider, as I said, the, the journey to the North Node to be a spiritual path. So probably spirituality as, as the ultimate resource, right? That's something we take with us wherever we go and even beyond this lifetime. And probably something about introducing the notion of real values into the world. And probably also through applied effort, um, becoming good with, with money, becoming good with possessions, becoming good with the material plane, with being able to work in and uh, skillfully manipulate the material plane. Do animals also identify with the zodiac? Oh my gosh. Well, I, I would say yes. Um, that's a great question. Our cats came uh, from the SPCA, so we don't know their birthdays. But I do know one of my horse's birthday, and she's an Aries, and she manifests as an Aries. She's impatient. She's got a temper. She's got a lot of energy. She's feisty. So in my experience, and I had another friend who, whose horse <clears throat> had a very thick neck, and he would kind of charge into things with, with his head and shoulders. And uh, she was telling me how stubborn he was one day, and I said, oh, is he a Taurus? And she said, as a matter of fact, he is a Taurus. Taurus rules the neck and the shoulders, and we can often... We can often spot signs by physical appearance. So someone who's really strong here, maybe Taurus, or, or Taurians often present as being somewhat voluptuous. They like to be sensual, so that can lead to a bit of overindulgence, which can lead to kind of a curvy figure. <laughs> so in my experience, yes, animals do manifest a zodiac. Relationships, who would we like to relate with? Those are people we admire, and, and we could say that those are people who we find beautiful. So it could be physical, or in that sort of physical attraction, or it could just be, wow, what a beautiful quality that person possesses. And Venus has a lot to do with mirrors. Like if they have, if a person has that beaut beautiful quality and I want to spend time around them, it's partly because I'm hoping that quality will rub off on me and that I can also embody that quality. So Venus and relationship have that quality of mirrors and the challenge of Venus is, is to not move towards vanity. Especially if um, our Taurus is strong and, and we're very into sensuality. And it can, uh, well, it can be a lot of fun. We'll put it that way. So Taurus is strong and sensual, and Mars is also strong. So physical, like physical strength really comes to mind for me when I hear that, and, and fortitude, and the ability to go for things. Because Taurus is a good worker, and Taurus can be very steady and move ahead and then Mars brings that element of drive and a bit more fire to it as well. So you're going to be have a really good ability um, to set your goals and go for them. Taurus is also very good at completion so you're going to be able to see through that to the end. Now fifth house is the house of creativity 
so creative endeavors that might be artistic, but it could be any kind of creativity. You know, software engineering is creative. That, that would depend on what else you have going on in your chart, for example, in your um, houses of career or vocation. And the ultimate act of creativity is making love and bearing children. So you, you may have a, a strong, that may be a strong area of your life as well. Taurus has an element of, so we have this notion of beauty. So Taurus likes to do things well. Taurus likes to do things correctly. Mm. And so Taurus can be a little bit painstaking, like, like slow and careful, mm. methodical. Those are tree and qualities. Mercury is really fast. Mercury, the god, had wings on his feet, right, and would kind of zip around. So, so those, so there might be an experience of some frustration there because Mercury's kind of trying to go, 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 and Taurus is sort of saying, "Hang on a minute, let's make sure we have this all right." Mm -hmm. And so, the nice thing about when this is a great example because as we become more aware of these things, we can, if we feel the Taurus kind of putting the brakes on, "Hang on, I want to get this completely right." we can make that choice and say, oh, just let Mercury and his winged boots do his thing and just let him fly. We can make those choices more easily when we're aware of the different elements involved. So I have, um, Taurus is in my 12th house. So 12th house, especially early in life, is the house of the unconscious. So I'd say that Taurian qualities were never a strength of mine. Or if I was, they were not very strong in my consciousness, which would be true to having it in the 12th house. So it's been something that I've really needed to apply myself towards to bring them more to my awareness. And yeah, that's... Taurus is a really fun sign, like, oh, I have to go buy a candle and light it and take a bath. Gee, tough life, right? <laughs> so, so that's been a really fun exploration for me. It was also really great to live in Japan. Japan is very much a sensing culture. And uh, gosh, I think I probably would have never tasted the food I was eating had I not moved to Japan where they kind of worship good cuisine and uh, learned all about the tasting function there and cooking there. That was, that was a really super exploration. And of course in Japan, they've raised the arts to meditations, right? So like the art of flower arranging or the art of tea ceremony or the art of incense. These are all paths that they've, that Zen Buddhism has developed. And that's a great example of Taurus in the 12th, using the senses as a meditation. Those, those are the oldest meditations in the world, after all, is using the senses. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, so we are almost at time. Okay. Call out for last questions, if anyone has any. Okay. Yeah, I guess once more I'd like to say the second house, it's about values and, and really being clear on what we value. And, and then remembering that it's the material world is really meant for our exploration and delight and, and pleasure. Those are all Turian pursuits. And at the same time, we can't put our refuge in, in any of those. They're all impermanent. So the ultimate value, the ultimate resource is really a, a beautiful state, um, a state of mind. And uh, that's what we highly recommend at Astro Dharma. Did you have uh, one last question? Yeah, we have one last from Dave, just under the wire. He says, I just realized that in my chart, Venus is in Cancer, which is complementary to my moon in Taurus. Could you talk about common blind spots and opportunities with moon in Taurus? Would that mirror Venus in Cancer? Yeah, yeah, that, that's uh, interesting. So both of those signs rule, so Venus rules Taurus and Moon rules Cancer. So they're kind of reinforcing one another by being in their opposite rulers. 
And yeah, I think maybe really prone to kind of cuddle marathons maybe sort of like oh my gosh I spent the whole weekend cuddling in bed what you know how did that happen that, that might be a potential liability um, if not literally a cuddle marathon um, maybe sort of metaphorical cuddle marathons just um, both of those placements are, are just super like combinations of emotions and sensing and uh, a quest for bliss, maybe maybe a tendency to kind of grasp for that bliss, that emotional and physical bliss, and and that's probably where the challenges are going to arise because uh, it's it's all in the mind after all. So um, sure, pursue it, enjoy it, and and don't cling to it. Good insight, good spot. So please join us next week when we'll explore Gemini, Mercury, and the third house. And please feel free, if you can't join us live, to post your questions into the event. We'll be glad to answer them and look forward to seeing you there. May all of our efforts benefit all beings. Thanks for joining us.